a very good evening aspirants i welcome you all to the hindu daily news analysis brought to you by shankar ais academy aspirants those who have not subscribed our youtube channel do subscribe and hit the bell icon button to get regular updates about our current affairs videos now before getting into discussion i have an important announcement to you the announcement is regarding prelims test series batch 3 of pre storming is about to begin the orientation session for the first test will be conducted on 16th november 2023 and the first test will be on 22nd november a total of 48 tests including mock and csat will be provided in the test series and the test will be conducted in both online and offline mode so go and register to the test series immediately and boost your prelim score with this announcement let us get into the daily news analysis today i am going to cover important news articles from the hindu newspaper dated 12th and 15th of november 2023 displayed here is a list of topics that we will be discussing today at the end of the video we will also have prelims practice question discussions so try to watch the entire video now let us get into our first news article discussion look at this news article yesterday in madhya pradesh our prime minister announced that the central government would introduce a scheme for tribal welfare with a budget of rupees 24000 crore the prime minister said that the scheme would be introduced on janjatiya gaurav divas which is celebrated on november 15th that is today Janjatiya Gaurav Divas is celebrated to honor the birth anniversary of a freedom fighter and a tribal leader Birsa Munda. Okay, this is all about the news. Now in this discussion, let us learn some important points about Birsa Munda and about the Munda Rebellion. Now first, let us see who are Mundas. Mundas are the tribal people residing in central India. They are mostly concentrated in the Chota Nagpur region of. Chark and Odisha and West Bengal some of them are also residing in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Tripura note that the mundas were descended as an immigrant tribe in Tripura apart from indian states some viable population of mundas are also seen in Nepal and Bangladesh note that mundas speak mundari language which belongs to austroasiatic family this is all about mundas now let us see about Birsa Munda Birsa Munda is a tribal freedom fighter belonging to the Munda tribe he was born in 1874 he led a rebellion against the british raj in the late 19th century birsa munda aroused the tribal mindset against the british and he fought for the welfare of tribal people okay now let us move on to see about munda rebellion the main reason for the rebellion is the replacement of kunkati system with the zamindari system see traditionally mundas followed the kunkati system kunkati system was actually a joint ownership of land by tribal lineage under the kunkati system the mundas usually cleared the forests and made the land fit for cultivation so the forest land belonged to the whole clan and not to a particular individual later the british replaced this kunkati system with the zamindari system so the ownership of the land was transferred to a single individual also some outsiders entered the tribal landscape and they started exploiting the mundas apart from this the mundas were compelled to work as forced laborers on their own land as a result mundas were pushed into poverty okay this is the main cause for the munda rebellion now what was the role of birsa munda in the munda rebellion Birsa Munda led the tribals primarily to prevent the non-tribals from taking their land. Also, Birsa wanted to prevent the Mundas from working as bonded laborers on their own property. So in 1984, Birsa announced his declaration against the British and the outsiders which marked the beginning of Munda Ulugulan or Munda Rebellion. During the rebellion, Birsa Munda managed to bring the tribal community under a single umbrella and he asked the tribes to re-establish their own kingdom birsa also asked the people not to pay taxes for these reasons birsa was arrested in 1895 and he was released after 2 years then in 1899 he resumed his armed struggle along with the people he raised police stations government property churches and houses of zamindars so the british caught him in 1900 from jamkopai forest and finally birsa munda died on june 9th 1900 at the ranchi jail 
okay this marked the end of munda rebellion although the rebellion could not reach the decided end it left a significant impact on the tribal movement of india it showed that the tribal people had the capacity to protest against injustice and express their anger against british rule later the british enacted the chota nagpur tenancy act 1908 this act restricted the transfer of tribal land to non tribal people as a result the kunkati rights were recognized and the mundas were granted legal protection for their land rights okay this is all about munda rebellion see because of his valuable contributions presently birsa munda is being worshiped as bagban in the state of jharkhand okay that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about mundas then about birsa munda and finally about munda rebellion see this topic is very important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this article is taken from 12th november newspaper this article talks about the latest attempt of delhi government to combat air pollution in and around delhi the delhi government took steps like artificial rain or cloud seeding to fight off the pollutants the artificial rain can settle down the toxic air pollutants effectively okay so this is the crux of the news article given here now in this discussion we will learn about cloud seeding from prelims perspective see cloud seeding is a kind of weather modification technology which will create artificial rain note that cloud seeding works only when there are enough pre existing clouds in the atmosphere this is because the cloud seeding does not create any new clouds the modern cloud seeding technology dates back to the late 1940s the cloud seeding process was discovered at the general electric labs in new york in 1946 now coming back to the cloud seeding cloud seeding involves the process of spreading either dry ice or silver iodide aerosols into the upper part of the clouds spreading of these aerosols will stimulate the precipitation process that forms rain see cloud seeding uses planes to spray the clouds with chemicals ultimately the spraying of chemicals will condense small water particles into larger rain droplets and this results in rain okay see the main advantage of cloud seeding method is that it will increase the rainfall rates by approximately 10 to 30 percentage per year cloud seeding is very cheaper than other process of creating artificial rains okay this is about the basics of cloud seeding now let us see the process involved in cloud seeding firstly the seeds of rain like diorites of silver or potassium then dry ice that is the solid carbon dioxide or liquid propane are inserted into the upper clouds the seeds can be delivered by a plane or simply by spraying from the ground these seeds of rain will provide a chemical nuclei around which the condensation of water droplets is accelerated in the cloud as a result the condensed and heavy water droplets can no longer be held around the nucleus so it will result in the rainfall okay this is how cloud seeding method actually works having understood the cloud seeding process let us see the benefits of cloud seeding firstly with the help of cloud seeding method we can create a rain in the dry land farming regions this in turn increases the crop yield at such dry land regions for example cloud seeding practice was done in karnataka in 2019 this was primarily done in the drought affected areas of karnataka secondly cloud seeding method can be used to fight various climate catastrophes like forest fire smog etc for example there is an application of cloud seeding in the bush fires of australia recently thirdly cloud seeding method can be widely used in reducing the air pollution levels apart from this it is also used in fog dispersal hail suppression and cyclone modification etc okay so these are all some of the benefits of cloud seeding method and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about cloud seeding then about the process involved in cloud seeding and finally we saw some points about the benefits of cloud seeding now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion 
look at this editorial article it talks about the direction of the supreme court to the central government recently the supreme court asked the central government to frame guidelines to protect the interests of media professionals the supreme court issued this direction in the backdrop of seizure of media professionals digital devices by the investigating officials apart from this the article also talks about various steps which can be taken to ensure freedom of press in india okay this is the crux of this editorial now in this discussion we'll write answer for a mains question related to freedom of press now first we look at the question the question is a free press is one of the pillars of democracy in this slide discuss the role of journalism in shaping public opinion and list out the challenges faced by journalism in india 250 words 15 marks see this question can be asked in gs paper 2 and it comes under the syllabus topic of important aspects of governance transparency and accountability e governance applications models success limitations and potential okay this is the syllabus now coming back to the question see the main directive in this question is discuss if your question contains the directive discuss you have to provide a written discussion on that matter for that discussion important points should be given on that particular issue and note that the points should be in an analytical manner okay now coming to today's question this question is a straight forward one firstly it demands us to discuss the role of journalism in shaping public opinion in the second part it asks us to list out the challenges faced by journalism and in the conclusion we can speak about the steps that can be taken to ensure freedom of press in india okay so this is how we are going to approach this question now let us start with introduction since the question is about journalism we can write the role of journalism in the intro part the introduction can be like journalism is a fourth pillar of democracy it plays a key role in ensuring the rights of individuals fighting for the vulnerable sections combating corruption fighting against the excess of governments etc journalism played an active role in our country's independence as many freedom fighters spread the message of freedom through the journals or newspapers recently journalism is plagued with various issues which is undermining the independence of journalism okay so in this way you can write a introduction now let us get into the main body of the question the first part of the body of the answer we should discuss the role of journalism in shaping the public opinion now let us see the role of journalism one by one the first role is with respect to dissemination of information as i said earlier journalism is the fourth pillar of democracy it actively spreads the information about various policies and schemes of the government to the general public the journalism also serves as a mirror for understanding various events around the world secondly the journalism is acting as a voice of the vulnerable people journalism is an active fighter against various humanitarian issues like violence against women atrocities against yes industries and so on so journalism creates a public opinion on various world issues even stopping the war for example active reporting from vietnam during us vietnam war created a firm public opinion in us this ultimately stopped the war so journalism acts as a voice of the vulnerable people okay this is the second role thirdly journalism functions as a public watchdog journalism is an active watchdog against any wrong doings of the government like corruption irregularities etc apart from this journalism also plays a major role in keeping the government accountable to the public so this in turn strengthens democracy okay this is the third role fourthly journalism serves as a reliable source in the era of fake news see journalism is a trusted source of people which acts as a clarification source in the era of fake news for example the governments across the world uses media to clarify their stance on various fake news okay this is the fourth role and finally journalism acts as an influence on public policy often social media has been used by politicians and the governments 
to gather support for their initiatives, schemes and etc. So if there is an increase in criticism on policies by the media, it led to amendments in the policies. Okay. So these are all the roles played by journalism in shaping public opinion. Okay. So this is the first part of the body of the answer. Now let us see the second part. In the second part, we will see the challenges faced by journalism in India. The first important challenge is the political and corporate influence on journalism. See various corporate houses are increasingly buying the media houses in India. This directly affects the independence of their working. As there is an increasing political corporate nexus, the media is forced to do biased reporting, paid news etc. Okay, this is the first challenge. And the second important challenge is with respect to the increasing surveillance of government. Often government around the world resort to autocratic practices like seizing the phones of journalists, then using the spywares to spy on journalists, then tapping the phones of journalists and so on. These activities of the government will seriously affect the freedom of press. Then the third major challenge is the erosion of legitimacy of the journalism among the general public. It is mainly due to fake news, increasing media trial etc. See these concerns are reducing the journalism as the reliable source for any information. Apart from this nowadays there is an increasing tendency of people relying on online sources rather than print sources for any information. This shows the reduced credibility of journalism. Okay, This is the third challenge. And the fourth important challenge is the safety concerns. Most often journalists are facing physical threats and safety concerns in the course of their work like reporting on sensitive issues, uncovering corruption etc. These threats put journalists at the risk of intimidation, violence or harassment etc. This in turn discourages the journalists from pursuing stories that are in the public interests and depriving the citizens of crucial information. Okay, This is the fourth important challenge. And the final major challenge is the commercialization of news. See the need for revenue and the sustainability often leads to a compromise in journalistic integrity. It leads to unwanted issues like sensationalism, the prioritization of profit over quality etc. Okay, So these are all some of the challenges faced by journalism in India. So you can mention all these points in the body part of your answer. Having completed the body part, now let us see the conclusion. See in the conclusion you can write the steps that can be taken to safeguard journalism in India. Now let us see the steps one by one. Firstly, legal protection for journalists should be strengthened to ensure the independence of journalists. Secondly, incorporating media ethics will increase the credibility of the journalism in India. And finally, from the media part, they should actively pursue unbiased reporting fight against corruption etc to increase the foundations of democracy. The media should also embrace digital subscriptions and crowdfunding to free itself from undue influence. Okay, By taking these steps, the independence of journalism can be achieved in India. See this can be a balanced conclusion for this question. And that's all regarding this discussion, in this discussion through the mains answer writing approach we saw the role of journalism in shaping public mind, then we saw about the challenges faced by journalism in India and finally we saw the steps that can be taken to ensure independence of journalism in India. Now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article, this article is taken from 12th November newspaper. According to the news article, the government plans to help small farmers who do not have the capacity to store their products in warehouses. For this purpose, a new scheme called PM Kisan Buy will be launched next month. This is the crux of the news article given here. Now in this discussion, let us learn about PM Kisan Buy scheme. PM Kisan Bandaran initiative which is shortly called PM Kisan Buy scheme is designed to give farmers more control over their crops and prices for their crops. This is done by helping the farmers to store their crops for at least 3 months after harvesting. The scheme will be implemented in pilot phase in 7 states such as Andhra Pradesh, Assam, 
மத்திய பிரதேஷ் மகாராஷ்டிரா ராஜஸ்தான் தமிழ்நாடு அண்ட் உத்தரப்பிரதேஷ் ஓகே நோ வாட் ஆர் த அப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் ஆஃப் த பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் த அப்ஜெக்டிவ் ஆஃப் த ஸ்கீம் இஸ் டு எம்பவர் ஃபார்மர்ஸ் பை பிரேக்கிங் த மோனோபுலி ஆஃப் ட்ரேடர்ஸ் இன் டிட்டர்மைனிங் கிராப் ப்ரைசஸ் த மெயின் எய்ம் இஸ் டு பிரேக் த ட்ரெடிஷ்னல் ப்ராக்டிஸ் வேர் ஃபார்மர்ஸ் ஆர் கம்பல்ட் டு செல் தேர் கிராப்ஸ் அரவுண்ட் த ஹார்வஸ் பீரியட் ஓகே திஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் த அப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் ஆஃப் பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் நோட் தட் தேர் ஆர் டூ காம்போனன்ட்ஸ் அண்டர் த பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் வேர் ஹவுசிங் ரெண்டல் சப்சிடி அண்டர் திஸ் காம்பனன்ட் த ஃபார்மர்ஸ் கேன் ஸ்டோர் தேர் ப்ரொடியூஸ் அட் வேர் ஹவுசஸ் அட் வெரி லோ காஸ்ட் ஸ்மால் அண்ட் மார்ஜினல் ஃபார்மர்ஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் ஃபார்மர் ப்ரொடியூசர் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் வில் பி எலிஜிபிள் ஃபார் வேர் ஹவுசிங் ரெண்டல் சப்சிடி ஃபார்மர்ஸ் கேன் ஸ்டோர் தேர் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் அட் எ ரேட் ஆஃப் ஃபோர் ருபீஸ் பெர் குவிண்டால் பெர் மந்த் ரிகார்ட்லஸ் ஆஃப் வேர் ஹவுசிங் சார்ஜஸ் நோட் தட் ப்ரொடியூசர்ஸ் ஸ்டோர்டு ஃபார் ஃபிஃப்டீன் டேஸ் ஆர் லெஸ் வில் நாட் பி குவாலிஃபை ஃபார் திஸ் வேர் ஹவுசிங் ரெண்டல் சப்சிடி த சப்சிடி வில் பி கேல்குலேட்டட் ஆன் டே டு டே பேசிஸ் ஓகே திஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் காம்பனன்ட் தென் செகண்ட் காம்பனன்ட் இஸ் ப்ராம்ட் ரீபேமெண்ட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் அண்டர் திஸ் காம்பனன்ட் தேர் வில் பி அடிஷ்னல் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் சப்வென்ஷன் அண்டர் கிசான் கிரெடிட் கார்டு ஸ்கீம் ஃபார் ஃபார்மர்ஸ் ஹூ ஸ்டோரிங் தேர் ப்ரொடியூஸ் அட் வேர் ஹவுசஸ் அண்ட் எஸ்டிமேட்டட் த்ரீ பர்சன்டேஜ் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ரிடக்ஷன் வில் பி கிவன் அண்டர் த ப்ராம்ட் ரீபேமெண்ட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் ஓகே சி திஸ் வே ஃபார்மர்ஸ் கேன் சூஸ் வென் டு செல் தேர் ப்ரொடியூசர்ஸ் இன்ஸ்டெட் ஆஃப் செல்லிங் ரைட் ஆஃப்டர் ஹார்வெஸ்டிங் ஸோ டு புட் இட் சிம்ப்ளி ஃபார்மர்ஸ் கேன் ஸ்டோர் தேர் ப்ரொடியூஸ் இன் வேர் ஹவுசஸ் அண்டர் த பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் அண்ட் தே கேன் வெயிட் ஃபார் பெட்டர் ப்ரைசஸ் டு செல் தேர் கிராப்ஸ் தேர் ஸ்டோரேஜ் காஸ்ட் வில் ஆல்சோ கெட் ரெடியூஸ்ட் பை த சப்சிடி ப்ரொவைடட் அண்டர் த பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் ஓகே ஸோ த பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் வில் சேஞ்ச் த ப்ரைசஸ் செட் பை ட்ரேடர்ஸ் த சக்ஸஸ் ஆஃப் த ஸ்கீம் வில் டிபெண்ட் ஆன் ஹவு பையர்ஸ் ரெஸ்பாண்ட் டு திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் ஸ்கீம் ஓகே அண்ட் தட்ஸ் ஆல் ரிகார்டிங் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் இந்த டிஸ்கஷன் இஸ் அபவுட் பிஎம் கிசான் பாய் ஸ்கீம் இன் டீடைல் வித் தீஸ் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் இன் மைண்ட் லெட்டஸ் மூவ் ஆன் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் டிஸ்கஷன் Look at this news article. The news article says that Indian government has announced a new set of awards to recognize achievements in the field of science. The award was named as Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar Awards. The news article also says that recently the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research that is CSIR declared the winners of the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Awards for 2022. Okay. This is all about the news. Now in this discussion, we will see the basic information about Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar Awards and about the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Awards. Now first let us take Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar Awards. Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar Awards was created by the central government for honoring the scientific achievements all over the country. This is created on the lines of civilian awards, that is the Padma Awards. Note that Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar Awards will be presented in four categories now let us see the categories one by one the first category is vinyan ratna it is awarded as lifetime achievement award in science then the second category is vinyan shri it is presented for distinguished contributions to a scientific field then the third category is vinyan yuva shanti swarup bhatnagar it is given to encourage exceptional young scientists and the final category is vinyan team this is presented to acknowledge scientific teams of 3 or more members okay so these are the four categories under rashtriya vinyan purushkar awards see these awards will be presented in 13 domains covering various scientific disciplines these awards will be issued from next year that is from 2024 onward the government also aims to ensure adequate representation of women among the awardees note that the nominations for the awards will be accepted annually between january 14 and february 28 the winners will be announced on may 11 that is on national technology day and the award ceremony will be held on august 23 which is national space day note that national space day will be celebrated to commemorate india's chandrayaan 3 mission okay Now, who will manage the Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar Awards? See, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, that is the CSIR, will manage the awards for the first two years. After that, 
the National Research Foundation will take over the control of managing the awards. See, Rashtriya Vinyan Prashkar Awards aims to rationalize and add value to scientific recognition in India. So, creation of Rashtriya Vinyan Prashkar Awards is a significant step in acknowledging and encouraging scientific excellence in India. Okay, so this is all about Rashtriya Vinyan Prashkar Awards. Now, we shall see about Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Awards. Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Awards is the highest honor for young scientists in India. The award was created in 1958 and it is given by CSIR annually. It is named after Dr. Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar who is the founder of CSIR and also the first director of CSIR. The award is annually announced on CSIR's Foundation Day which is September 26th. Know that the first receiver of Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award was Srinivasa Krishnan Kariya Manikam. Okay. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw the basic information about Rashtriya Vinyan Purushkar and Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Awards. With these points in mind, now let us move on to the next part of the video. That is to discuss preliminary practice questions. As parents, today we are having three questions. Let us solve them one by one. Look at the first question. I will read out the question. The famous tribal leaders Siddhu and Kanhu are associated with which of the following tribal revolt? Option A. Munda Rebellion Option B. Santal Rebellion Option C. Coal Uprising Option D. Bills Uprising Here the correct answer is Option B. Santal Rebellion The Santal Rebellion was a tribal uprising. It took place in 1855-1856 against the unfair Zamindari system and the permanent tax settlement system of the British Raj. It was carried out in present day Jharkhand and West Bengal. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. This question is regarding PM Kisan scheme and Kisan credit card scheme. Here three statements are given. We have to find how many of the statements are correct. Look at the first statement. Both help to address the post harvest and working capital needs of the farmer. See this statement is correct. Both PM Kisan scheme and Kisan credit card scheme aims to address the post harvest and working capital needs of the farmers in India. Now coming to the second statement, both help farmers from falling into the debt trap. See this statement is also correct. Now coming to the third statement, both provides low cost credit to the farmers. See this statement is incorrect because only Kisan credit card scheme provides low cost credit or loans to the farmers. But through the PM Kisan scheme, the government just pays the farmers with 6,000 every year. So third statement is incorrect. Here only first and second statement are correct. So the correct answer for the question is option B only 2. Moving on, let's take up the final question. I will read out the question. Who among the following bodies will select the recipients of Rashtriya Vinyan Prashkar? Option A, National Research Foundation. Option B, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Option C, National Innovation Foundation. Option D, Principal Scientific Advisor Committee. Here the correct answer is Option D, Principal Scientific Advisor Committee. See, to select the recipients, Rashtriya Vinyan Prashkar Committee will be set up under the chairmanship of Principal Scientific Advisor of India. Once again, the correct answer is Option D, Principal Scientific Advisor Committee. With this, we have come to the end of the video. If you found our video to be useful, do like, comment and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.